Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Hunted by the Past Episode 3 Chapter 16 Nora, that's amazing. I know. I... I did it without thinking. I'm not even sure I can do it again, now that my anger has vanished. I massage my throat, still a bit surprised. Am I really getting closer to shape-shifting? Can I ever let my wolf out someday? I have to try. But you didn't really kill Marcus, did you? Asks Elizabeth, returning back to her seat. She probably asked because of my slight demonstration, but we both know that's nothing compared to going into my wolf form. I shake my head. I haven't, but... I don't know. I'm not sure what happened back there, Liz. Everything is so confusing about what happened on that day. All I get are some random and blurry flashbacks. She stares at me for a while. Elizabeth really has stopped the gossiping now, I can tell she's serious. She plays with her bracelets, seeming hesitant for a while, before finally speaking out. Nora, you can tell me. Marcus assaulted you. She whispers. I avoid her eyes. I don't want to talk about it, I really don't. That dog did what? Oh, no. Liam just came back and is standing on the doorstep, close enough that he probably heard what Elizabeth just said. Oh, this is not going to go well. He runs up to us and looks at me with a furious gaze. Nora, what is that girl talking about? Who did what to you? He may not be Damien, but I can definitely see a lot of resemblance between the two, especially when he is angry like that. Liam definitely has the same ice-cold stare and furious look as his older brother. Why is he so angry? I thought he didn't really like me. Is it because I'm his brother's fated mate? He's menacing, but I'm not scared like I was yesterday with Damien, maybe because it's not directed at me. But how am I supposed to handle this? Elizabeth won't say a word now that Liam's back and I don't want to talk about that topic either. Not to my mate's little brother. I just shake my head. It's nothing, Liam. What, nothing? Nora, if my brother knows, don't, Liam. Let's not talk about this now, okay? I really don't want to. Not now. I try to be as convincing as I can but I can tell he's seriously hesitating. I can almost hear him debating inside. Then, he glances at Elizabeth, and lets out an annoyed growl. Okay, but only for now. Later, you tell me what this is about. I promise, but you won't tell him a thing. Agreed. He looks at me with a sullen look for a while, but finally lets out a low growl of agreement. Seems like Liam and I keep bargaining today. At least I managed to have him let go of the annoying subject for now. I'm not sure he will really keep his promise not to tell Damien, but that was the best I could do. Elizabeth's eyes go from me to him and back, and she grabs my hand without warning. Nora, come with me. We have to tell Vincent you're fine. But I take my hand out of hers, filled with worry. Elizabeth seems confident, but I'm not sure everyone in the pack will be as happy to see me as she was. Did she forget how they treated me? I was no better than a slave back there, and I don't want to go back to that meaningless life of mine. I glance at Liam, but he is waiting for my decision. Wasn't I the one who wanted to come back here, after all? Sure. I wanted to see what happened after my disappearance but having my brother gone changed a lot of things. And I may still be part of the Jade Moon, but I refuse to be insulted or hit again. I ponder for a while, but no matter what, I have to go somehow. 
One day or another, I will have to face my Alpha about what happened, and decide what to do. Could you accompany me? I ask Liam. Sure. But I warn you, if those guys do anything to you, I won't let it slide. I was at the hospital when the doc examined you. I'm not dumb. And trust me, it's better that it's me than one of my brothers. I know. I just need to settle things with them. Okay then. Don't be a weakling. But instead of heading for the door, he goes behind the bar and starts undressing. Once he's done, he stuffs everything inside his school bag and changes to his wolf form. His transformation is extremely quick. The youngest black brother has a somewhat standard size for a wolf, but his big paws indicate he might not have reached his final size yet. He is dark, but not just black. Actually, he has some dark brown-red hair here and there, on the collar and below his ears. He comes up to me and gives me his backpack, and I turn back to Elizabeth. Okay, let's go, then. Elizabeth gives me a happy smile and comes with us, closing the bar behind her. I am in a terrible state of nervousness. If Liam wasn't walking beside me, I might have turned around already. We walk up until we can finally see the main house. I know the Jade Moon members can already smell us if they are in their wolf form, and there are always some guarding the area. As expected, as soon as we approach, several wolves start following us, growling with a menacing tone. But most of them should recognize Elizabeth and me, and no one approaches us. I suppose they are most cautious of Liam, who is a stranger, stepping on their turf. But he just keeps walking by my side, ignoring them. Alpha is coming, says Elizabeth next to me. She probably is talking with some of them telepathically right now. I wish I could, too. I wonder what everyone is saying right now. We are a few meters away from the main house, when I stop. I don't want to come in, and Vincent is coming anyway. He looks stunned, and his eyes keep switching between me and the black wolf now sitting at my feet. Liam seems like he doesn't care, patiently waiting, but I can tell he is watching what's going on very closely. Peter comes out right after Vince and Liam starts a low growl as they approach us. He lets out a menacing bark when they're a few steps away, and they stop, conscious this is a warning. Vincent looks at me, dumbfounded. Nora. I really didn't recognize you from afar. What happened? We looked for you. Did they really? Damien mentioned Alec as soon as my brother was spotted looking for me but I realize now that I haven't heard from the Jade Moon clan at all. And considering Damien and Nathaniel were probably looking for which clan I came from, I doubt they would have missed people asking around for me. It's most likely the Jade Moon already considered me as dead or hoped I had gone rogue. Hello, Alpha. Beta. I salute without averting my eyes. Sorry I disappeared. Lots of things happened. Lots of things? Nora, you better have a good explanation for why you were gone for, but before Peter finishes his sentence, Liam is growling loudly beside me, and everyone understands he's most likely warning him to watch his words. He looks at the wolf, annoyed, and turns to me. Who is this? A friend. From which clan? I hesitate. Is it okay to reveal my new connection to the Blood Moon clan now? I'm not sure if it's a good thing to do. After all, I have no official connection to them yet, and I'm totally not supposed to be here. Neither is Liam. Will Damien be mad if he knows? I don't care about the Jade Moon, but I would rather not take chances with him. I decide to ignore Peter's question and turn to Vincent. You exiled Alec? Yes, about a month ago. Your brother had become troublesome. He stole money from your beta and kept borrowing money from everyone. 
Peter confronted him, and we decided to banish him. Do you know where he is now? No, I don't know, and I couldn't care less. But you are not in a position to ask questions now, Nora. We need to discuss. Come in. They turn around and start walking to go to the main house, but I don't move. I am not going into that house ever again. I feel like I will be back in prison if I take a single step closer. Next to me, Liam hasn't moved either, but he is still growling at the other wolves circling us. Now I realize this situation is not so good either. I may have decided to not give in any more, but that won't hold Vincent from getting mad at me. What if he decides to punish me and attack us? Liam is probably very strong since he is the head hunter of his pack, but he is alone, and I can't shift. I exchange a glance with him, but maybe because of his wolf form, he doesn't seem worried one bit. What are you waiting for? Growls Vincent. I said come in. We can discuss from here. Excuse me? Who do you think you are now? He growls again, but this time I can growl back, too, and I do. He will no force me to submit again. For some reason, I feel stronger and more confident than ever. My wolf agrees with me she is done with this nonsense. She won't let me down on this one. Me responding to the alpha like this causes everyone else to fall silent from surprise. But all of a sudden, everyone starts threatening us back, loudly. Gosh, I really hope nobody is going to actually attack. I don't like how things look. Even the sky is getting darker and menacing. I focus on Vincent, perfectly aware that no one will dare to do a thing without a word from him. At the moment, I can tell he is hesitating. His eyes went from shock to anger, but now he is considering the dark wolf and me. What is this, Nora? You disappear for weeks, and now you come back and actually dare to disobey your alpha. Says Peter. Why is nobody asking about my disappearance then? We said we will talk about it inside. And without strangers. No. I'm not going anywhere, and neither is he. I will talk here, or I'll go. Don't bargain with your alpha. Growls Peter. But he isn't scaring me anymore. I'm scared about the twenty or so wolves surrounding us, but the alpha and beta's authority won't work on me. How is that possible? Did they already banish me? Or is the fact that I'm getting closer to my wolf allowing me to stand against them? I can really feel her. She is with me, standing her ground and growling to show she's no pushover anymore. They always considered me a fake, weak, useless wolf, but I guess things should be different now. I may be more vulnerable and not able to shapeshift, but I'm definitely done being a slave for them to use. That doesn't mean I'm not scared. I do my best to appear strong, but my hands are slightly shaking, and no confidence can take away all that I have endured these past years. I may not give in to the Alpha's authority, but I'm still very aware of how a wolf attack can be painful. I'm not going to provoke them and get myself killed today. They look at me, probably gauging me all over again. There is still the matter of your attack on Marcus and Alec, suddenly says Vincent. I did not attack them. Then why did you go that day? People saw you going with your brother. He was dragging me out. But Liam is here, I'm not sure what I can tell. I did not attack Alec. He forced me to follow him. You liar. I turn around. Amber just arrived looking furious, and pointing her finger at me. What does she want now? That woman was always acting like my brother's girlfriend, and Alec probably thought so, but everyone in the pack knows Amber used to cheat on him as she wanted. She's a popular girl, with her long honey blonde hair and curves, and she loves the attention. 
I could name at least five guys she's been sleeping with without thinking. She joins Peter and Vincent, looking at me like I'm some pest. She had Alec follow her, pretending she could solve their money problem. Then, she tried to kill Marcus to take his money. Everyone knows he was loaded. What is this crazy story? Where did she make this up from? I'm so shocked I can't even find the words. Peter turns at her with a frown. That's Alec's story, Amber. You weren't there when it happened. No, but he told me. Oh, come on. Do you think Marcus disappeared on his own? And Alec hurt himself? This did it. You know how much she hated them. I did nothing. Alec lied. Oh, really? Then why did you disappear for a month? And now, you come back looking all good and dressed up in fancy clothes? How dumb do you think we are, you murderer? Shut up! I yell, infuriated. How can she say such things? She knows nothing, she just hates me. But now both the Alpha and the Beta are looking at me and my clothes with a suspicious look. Liz sighs. Oh, please. Vince, this is Nora we are talking about. Nobody believed Alec when he told that story, and now you are going to actually listen to that. Liz. Shut up and go back inside. Why are you getting yourself involved in this? Robert was among the group of people that came out of the house, and he actually comes to grab his daughter and take her away from us. Elizabeth protests, but her father is definitely stronger. I can only watch as she is taken away to the side, still yelling at Amber. Now Vincent seems really hesitant, and Peter's eyes are going from Amber to me. Amber knows nothing, Alpha. I was hospitalized, and someone helped me out. But I didn't kill Marcus or took his money. And I didn't do anything to my brother, either but I can tell they don't believe me. The mysterious friend helping me out of nowhere is a big loophole, and I know it. I glance down at Liam, wondering what to do. He is fiercely growling at other wolves, and about twenty jade moon wolves are only waiting to jump at us. How did I get into such a situation? Peter takes a step and reaches his arm out to grab me. Okay, that's enough. Nora, you are coming with us. Tell your friend to go away, or we will attack him, too, if, but before he could finish his sentence or touch me, a huge form jumped over him, and we heard the sound of bones getting crunched. I see Peter's arm hanging under Bobo's enormous fangs. We hear a scream before I can even realize what just happened, as I'm still in shock. The beta's shoulder is bleeding in an endless flow where his arm was still attached a second ago. I can barely keep myself from throwing up. Other people start screaming in shock, or fear, I don't know. In front of me, Bobo is standing like a huge barrier between me and the trio. Peter has lost consciousness, but the other two have stepped back. Looks like you guys are gonna need a new beta, says a voice behind me. I turn around and see Nathaniel standing there, smiling in a really scary manner. Chapter 17 I can't believe what's happening. Everyone has gone totally silent, and all eyes are set on Nathaniel. He is walking calmly to us, and it takes me a few seconds to realize a dozen menacing wolves are following him. Among them, I notice a big one, and I realize it's probably Tanya as her fur is slightly darker than her brother's, like she depicted. Vincent looks even more shocked than I am. He is staring blankly at Nathaniel, his mouth open, looking totally lost. I know this is precisely what he always feared. Provoking a stronger pack. I can remember how stressed out he was about the whole dinner thing. He won't even take a look at Peter laying in a bloodbath next to him. He just stares blankly at Nathaniel, 
trying to understand what's going on. Amber has gone white as a sheet, and she is shaking from head to toe. No one dares to say a word. Nathaniel slowly walks up to me, and I'm totally lost on what to say. I feel so bad. About all of this. But he gives me his usual gentle smile. Nora, you should have just told us, you know? Now I had to come all the way here and hear all this nonsense. I... I'm sorry, I just... But before I can figure out how to explain myself, Nathaniel reaches out his hand to gently caress my hair and shakes his head with a gentle smile. It's okay, princess. You should save it for when you see my brother. He is, not very happy about you sneaking out. Oh my goddess, Damien knows. He is going to kill me. He must be dead furious now. And right after he finally came to see me, too. Nathaniel turns to Liam, crosses his arms, and sighs. His little brother just avoids his eyes like a kid who knows he is about to get scolded. You can't help yourself, can you, Liam? Not only you skip school, but now you have to help Nora run into trouble, too. He waits for a second, still looking at his younger sibling, and I realize Liam must be talking back to him. But Nathaniel shakes his head. Oh no, don't even start trying to use our princess as an excuse, Liam. We are going to have a serious discussion once we get back. And yes, little brother, you're grounded. Liam just lets out an annoyed growl, but apparently, he won't stand up to his brother. Seems like the hierarchy is very clear between the three of them. Nathaniel now walks past us and stands next to Bobo, looking straight at Vincent. He is not smiling anymore. As all of the Blood Moon clan wolves are now growling fiercely, the Jade Moon ones have slowly started taking a few steps back. Even though some of them still try to keep growling, too, they clearly are frightened. Nathaniel's wolves make it very clear who has the upper hand. Tanya walks up to me, standing opposite to Liam. I try to whisper a sorry, but she is ignoring me. I guess I'll have to deal with this once we get back. Prin. Princess. Mumbles Vincent. He seems to have realized who the black wolf that was accompanying me is by now. He is looking at me as if he's seeing me for the first time, trying to process everything. Well, now I would love to hear an explanation, says Nathaniel. X. Explanation? About what? Stutters Vincent. Yes. An explanation to know why you guys hit and mistreated our precious princess. Nathaniel's words are a cold shower for everyone here. Some members of the pack are looking at me with terrified eyes, probably reminiscing about when they last hit me or were rude to me in some manner. And it's not just two or three people. What? We didn't hide her, suddenly, I remember the dinner night. Liam's voice asking is that all your girls, before he and Nathaniel left. That intriguing sentence angered Amber, but back then I didn't really think about it twice. But what does it have to do with me? Nathaniel makes it sounds like the Black Brothers were, actually looking for me. But how could that be? We asked you if we had met every girl from your clan, and you said we did. You had no one looking anything like Nora at the dinner. So now, let me ask you, how could we possibly have missed her if she was indeed one of your pack members? Vincent looks completely lost. He had me locked up in the basement that night. He didn't think I was worthy of meeting them, and honestly, how could he have imagined such a day would come? The weak, pathetic, hated, and disfigured girl turns out to be the most feared Alpha's mate. That's not something Vincent would ever imagine, not even in his worst nightmares. He looks at me, still trying to make a connection, unable to face the truth. How could this girl be of any, 
any interest to you. She's just a, a stray. Nathaniel is smiling, but I can tell he's not the slightest happy. I would say he's only getting even angrier. His eyes look like ice, and that's a frightening look I've seen before on both his brothers. Two grey eyes staring at Vincent like he could murder him on the spot. And I bet he could. He takes a menacing step towards Vincent, and for a second, I think he really is about to kill him right here. All the blood seems to have left Vincent's face. When Nathaniel speaks, his voice is just as menacing as if he was holding a knife next to the Alpha's throat, and his sharp and cold voice gives me a chill. That stray girl you are talking about is my older brother's fated mate. A chilling silence follows his words, and all eyes turn to me. For a few seconds, Vincent looks like he is about to collapse as he staggers, white as a sheet. He looks at me, so shocked he can't even utter a sound. But Nathaniel suddenly speaks up again, and takes a new step closer, making Vincent stagger and fall in front of him. So, now. Would you tell who is responsible for her scars? My brothers and I are really, really eager to know. I hear several people from the pack gasp, or let out a whimper. Bobo is growling very loudly, and that's a frightening sound not three wolves together could make. He still has Peter's arm, and the blood is still leaking out in a gruesome manner beneath him. Vincent suddenly shakes his head, looking panicked. No, 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 it's, it's not that. We, we really didn't know, she. Nora was, I look at him, disgusted. What, that the Alpha I used to fear all the time. He is blabbing nonsense, trying to come up with excuses. How could I ever be scared of such a pathetic man? Nathaniel stands there, emotionless, while Vincent is struggling pathetically. We, we welcomed them to, to our pack a few years ago. They were just, just homeless kids, they. She had nothing. We gave her food and shelter. Food and shelter. I can't help but repeat, shocked. Both Nathaniel and Vincent turned to me, surprised to hear me speak out. But I shake my head, glaring at my pathetic alpha. You put me in the basement. You made me work from dawn until dusk, and never let me eat with you. You never even considered me a part of our pack. Liam starts growling again after hearing me, but I ignore him. Vincent is apparently not as scared of me as he is of Nathaniel, and tries to defend himself. Everyone has to work to earn their living. You, you would have died in the streets if it wasn't for me, Nora. I look at him, taken aback by his nerve. How can he still be standing there saying such things to my face? To earn a living? I was not even nine years old when the Jade Moon clan took me in. For almost ten years they only let me live to work for them as a slave, giving me scraps. Nobody else would have helped you, but we did. Doesn't that count? Asks Vincent. I know he is trying to beg for his life. He's aware Nathaniel only cares about me, and won't hesitate a single second to kill him and all the others. His beta is dying in a blood pool not two feet away at this very moment. Vincent is basically begging me to spare them. But I'm in no mood for his excuses. You never really meant to help me, did you? All you saw was a helpless child, a free slave you could make use of. I was young, and you know no one would protect me. Nobody would care no matter what happened to me. You never did. The painful words I could never say out loud are now flowing out, with tears, and I can't stop it. All the suffering resurfaces. All those bitter memories that I can't stand anymore. I'm giving up on any hope I had left in this clan. This is the truth, and it has long waited to come out. You are not my alpha. You never acted like one to me. You never protected me or considered me your family, 
not in the slightest. All you did was use me, like some tool you could throw away any time. I was broken, and all you did was break me even more. I gave the last nine years of my life to this man, to this pack, and now I realize what a mess they have made of it. I was never meant to be that pitiful or weak, but they pushed me to the edge day after day. Whether they abused me or stayed as bystanders, no one in this pack ever gave me a hand. None of them ever cared about me, and they were content with it. Living their everyday lives, keeping their eyes closed and ignoring all I endured like it wasn't their problem. No, Nora. I didn't do it. I never laid a hand on you, did I? I even tried to keep Alec off your back, sometimes, I, you didn't do anything. You let others do it for you, and that was it. You saw what they did to me, and you closed your eyes a million times. A million times you could have put an end to it with a single word, and you never ever did. You are worse than any of them. You are not even worthy of being called an alpha. I yell, bursting with anger. I, I, but he has nothing else to say. He knows I'm right. Never saying anything doesn't mean I don't remember. Vincent shakes his head, trying to find something else to defend himself, but I am done with this. I turn around to wipe my tears, exhausted by all of this. Nathaniel is looking at me, and he seems impressed by my sudden burst, but I just feel angry and exhausted by all this yelling. But as I turn around, a voice suddenly arises. You wench. You should just shut up and be grateful the Alpha accepted a cursed, freak like you. No one wanted, Amber's words die in her throat when Liam suddenly jumps at her with a loud growl. She has the reflexes to change into her wolf form to defend herself, but the battle is cut short. Within two seconds, his fangs lacerate her neck and faces, and the golden wolf dies before our eyes before she even has a chance to fight back. I cover my mouth, speechless. I can't believe Amber just died as quickly as that. Liam leaves her corpse to go back to his brother but his mouth covered in fresh blood is still growling angrily. Nathaniel looks straight into Vincent's eyes, and this time there is no smile. This was the last time I hear one of you talk like that about Nora ever again. We will leave behind as many corpses as necessary for that. The Alpha is so stunned about what just happened, he can't help but nod with a totally blank expression. Two of his wolves just died in front of him, and he couldn't do a thing to stop it. And now the lives of his whole pack are hanging. He seems about to say something, but doesn't. Suddenly, one of the Jade Moon Wolves, who I recognize as Mark, one of Amber's lovers, leaves the group to run towards us. He is clearly attacking us, but even before he is within reach, two of the Blood Moon Wolves jump and kill him on the spot. Right behind him, I see his sister whimper, and she starts running, too. But this time, no one stops her. She runs straight to us, visibly aiming for me. But the she-wolf is suddenly stopped by Nathaniel's hand. I did not even see him move, but he managed to grab the brown wolf by the throat, and holds her at arm's length, her paws not even reaching the ground. She whimpers and tries to free herself from his grasp, but he is clutching, and we suddenly hear the sound of her neck bone breaking. Nathaniel's eyes roam the assembly, but no one dares to move an inch anymore. He just killed a wolf with a single move, while still in his human form. He opens his hand, and the dead wolf falls at his feet. I warned you. Anyone else wants to try me? Enough. Enough please. Says Vincent, shaking. Nathaniel turns to him. I have yet to hear any names. Nathaniel, stop it. Surprised, both Alpha's eyes turn to me, but I'm only looking at Nathaniel. I can't really feel sorry for the Jade Moon Pack. 
I wonder if that's wrong of me, but I just don't. They were about to trust Amber's words instead of mine, and they probably didn't care to know if I was telling the truth anyway. If it wasn't for Nathaniel, I might already be back in the basement getting a beating by now. I can't feel sorry for them anymore. However, even if I don't consider them my pack anymore, I can't let the blood moon just keep killing them without saying a thing. There are innocent families and children among them. I don't want to be the reason for bloodshed and tragedy. I step up to the man I once considered my alpha, and Bobo comes to stand close to me, acting like a bodyguard again. He finally spits out the lifeless arm. Ugh, I wish he had done that earlier, that's so gruesome. Nathaniel's wolves suddenly all start growling loudly, pushing Vincent's warriors to retreat away from him. I face Vincent, clenching my fist. I'm not stopping them because of you. I still hold you responsible for what happened. But this clan needs its alpha, and I'm done with seeing blood spilled today. From today on, the Blood Moon Clan and Velvet Moon Clan are hostiles to the Jade Moon Clan, declares Nathaniel. Any of you takes one step into our turf, and you will face the consequences. This is basically exiling the whole clan out of Silver City. Even if the Black Brothers only reign over half of the city, the remaining clans won't take risks by having contact with the Jade Moon clan. Any other pack's turf will now be a potential threat to them. Nathaniel just isolated the whole pack in two sentences. Vincent looks like he is about to cry, but unfortunately for him, this is not over yet. In ten days at dusk, I want this whole pack to come to the East Point ground. If a single person is missing, no matter the reason, we will hunt them down. This is a challenge for the Alpha position. I stare at Nathaniel, dumbfounded. A duel to take over the Jade Moon Clan? Chapter 18 Nathaniel took us back to the city, and two cars are waiting for us in the street, one white and the other black. Almost all the other wolves have already dispersed one after another, leaving only a few of us. Tanya changes into her human form as soon as she retrieves her clothes from the trunk. Visibly pissed, she quickly puts on her jeans and a tank top, and takes the black car's driver's seat without a look for me. Bobo, who was busy cleaning the blood from his face and cleaned himself and lay down on the back seats. Liam takes his backpack back and changes to his human form, too. The whole time. Nathaniel's eyes won't leave him. It seems like I'm not the only one in trouble. Nora, you get in the car with Tanya. Liam, you come with me. Liam and I exchange a look, but we don't dare protest. He rolls his eyes and obeys his brothers, throwing his backpack in the car before going in. I bet he's going to get scolded in the car. I take the black car's passenger seat while Nathaniel heads to the white one. I notice a cream wolf with mesmerizing citron-colored eyes I've never seen before is coming with them. Aside from Bobo, she's the only wolf left from the ones that came with Nathaniel. She naturally stands close to him, so I guess she is a member of his Velvet Moon pack. So pretty. Who is she? I didn't see her interact with Nathaniel at all, but maybe I missed something. I try to get a look at the trio, but Tanya starts the engine, and I lose sight of the other car in a few seconds. We drive for a while, clearly aiming back to the apartment, but a heavy silence has taken over the vehicle. She doesn't even put the radio on, and the oppressive atmosphere is unsettling. After a while, I decided to give it a go. Tanya, Bobo, I'm sorry, oh, really. She sounds really, really pissed. I suppose she is. I did sneak out of the apartment while Bobo was sleeping. What can I say now? She seems focused on the road, but I'm sure she is boiling inside. Everyone stays silent for a couple of minutes, but all of a sudden, 
Tanya explodes and starts yelling inside the car. Nora, what did you think you were doing? Do you have any idea how mad the boss is at the moment? Nathaniel could barely keep him from coming. And you know what would have been the result of him coming to get you? Do you know? And you? Do you have any idea how dangerous and stupid of you that was? This alpha of yours could have hurt you. Or any of those wolves. Do you want to go back to the hospital again? Do you want to? That was a foolish idea to go there alone, Nora. I wasn't alone, she hits the dashboard, making me jump. Don't mention that Liam. This brat is no better than you. Always getting into trouble, why does it have to be the two of you now? Two weeks ago, he got into a fight with five rogues. And now he is skipping school and helping you in getting yourself killed? If there is anything left of him once Nathaniel is done, I'm going to teach him a good lesson, too. I'm so mad at you too. What is wrong with teens? I'm feeling sorry for Liam. I think I can handle being scolded by Tanya, but I fear Nathaniel might be giving him a hard time right now. Judging by their interactions earlier, he really seems to respect his brothers. Tanya keeps talking and goes on about my recklessness, but I'm not listening anymore, I'm thinking about what happened today. This is crazy. My brother made me guilty of everything that happened in the clan's eyes. Then, Nathaniel's intervention. I see Peter, Amber, Mark and his sister's corpses. Four people died within ten minutes before my eyes. I knew the Blood Moon clan lived up to its reputation, but... I know this kind of thing happens with Moon clans. Werewolves are not gentle creatures, and our instincts push us to use our strength to mark our territory and fight for more. I've seen dead people before. Rogues we killed, other clans members fighting to death. But now, I know what they mean when they say the Black Brothers are ruthless. Nathaniel didn't even blink while killing Mark's sister. Liam and Bobo both attacked to kill from the start. None of them showed the slightest hint of hesitation. They have nothing in common with the Jade Moon clan, which is always avoiding trouble. The Blood Moon takes what it wants. That makes me think about Nathaniel's words. How could they possibly have been looking for me? They couldn't have known who I was to Damien back then. Now that I think about it. Nora, are you listening to me? Sorry Tanya, I was, thinking. But why did you save me that night? She looks taken aback by my sudden question, and her angry expression vanishes as quickly as that. She looks at me, confused. I notice that behind us, Bobo stopped pretending to sleep and has raised his head and ears to listen. What do you mean? You were attacked and, no, I mean, why me? You didn't know I was Damien's mate. It was cold and pouring, nobody was out in the streets that night, but you guys were there. Not only you were there at the right time to save me, but you also took me straight to a hospital and treated me like, like a princess from the start. It doesn't seem like something someone from the Blood Moon clan would do at all. Not for a random stranger, some unknown girl you found in the street. This time, she has stopped talking. She seems hesitant, and I can see her exchanging glances with Bobo through the mirror. Are they talking using their telepathic bond? Hard to tell. The siblings stay silent for a long moment before Tanya finally sighs. Okay, you're right, baby girl. We were looking for you. But you didn't know me. No, but... We were looking for a 17-year-old girl with blue eyes, black hair, and a scar on her face. We knew you were in danger. Bobo smelled a lot of blood and we tracked you all the way to that street. It's not just us, Nora, all of the Blood Moon clan was roaming the streets looking for someone fitting your description that night. What? 
How could that be? This is nonsense. The boss somehow knew you were in danger. He felt your panic and sent everyone out to find someone fitting your description. I don't know how he knew precisely what you looked like, Nora. He just said his mate was in danger before we all went. This is impossible. First, how could he have known I was in danger that night? To know our mate is in danger or hurt, we need to have met him or her at least once and made eye contact, to awaken the bond between our wolf selves. How could Damien possibly have known I was his mate before having met me first? And even if, somehow, he could feel our bond, how did he know what I looked like? The description Tanya gave me is too precise to be luck. He even knew how old I am, and about my scar. And why couldn't I know about our bond? My wolf recognized Damien for the very first time as her mate when we were at the hospital. I'm positive she had never felt any connection like this before, she never met him. None of this makes sense. I don't get how this could be possible. Tanya, Damien, and I met for the first time at the hospital. I didn't even know I had a mate before that. Me neither, baby girl. The boss didn't explain anything, you know. He just confirmed it was indeed you when he saw you laying in the hospital bed after that. He never told us how he knew about your bond. From what I saw, the only other person who might have known about the boss even having a mate is Nathaniel, since he wasn't surprised at all. He acted as if he knew about you right from the start. I am not sure about Liam, though. I take my head in my hands, trying to process everything. That is way too much happening in one day for me to handle. Not only everything going on with my clan, but now even my bond with Damien is. I sigh. Behind me, Bobo lets out a whimper. He wants to know if you're okay. I'm fine, Bobo. Sorry again for sneaking out on you, Tanya seems about to scold me again, but she exchanges a look with her brother and rolls her eyes. He says he's not really mad. He understands you wanted to go out, but he was anxious something might have happened to you. He says next time you ought to bring him, too. And that I... Hey, I don't nag too much, shut up. Aren't you guys supposed to stop me? If you're going to sneak out eventually, we would rather come, too. But Bobo is the only one thinking that, I don't agree with this. I smile at Bobo, thankful to him for being so understanding. He probably felt as trapped as I was in that apartment. I don't get why Damien is so persistent in having me locked in. I'm done with the golden prison. We finally arrive back at the building, and by the time the elevator takes us upstairs, most of my confidence has vanished like snow under the sun. Liam is standing next to me, pouting and avoiding Nathaniel's gaze. Guess the big brother talk really has some effect on him. Now that I see them, it seems like they are several years apart. If Liam's my age, I would guess Nathaniel is around 22 or 23. But he might be even older, I'm not sure. What about Damien then? I need to ask Tanya later. With the two wolves and four people standing in the elevator, space is quite crowded, but I wish we stayed there longer. As soon as it stops, I feel a pain in my stomach starting. I'm so nervous, I can barely breathe. The door opens, but only Nathaniel, Liam and the pretty she-wolf exit the elevator. This is two floors beneath mine. Is one of the brothers living here, too? Or both? We will see you later, princess. The door closes again, and this time, the siblings and I exit the right floor. How can I be so tense already? I feel like a storm is waiting for me behind the door. Tanya opens the door for me, but both of them flee to the kitchen, leaving me alone to face Damien. I take a deep breath and walk in. 
I take out my sweater to leave on one of the chairs, as it got tainted with blood somehow, and I feel way too hot. When I finally enter the main room, Damien is standing against the glass wall, looking right at me with his silver eyes, arms crossed. Even when he is fuming like this, I find him breathtakingly handsome. I feel scared, but not as much as I was before. I slowly walk up to him, and his eyes won't leave me. I stop when I'm within arm's reach from him. I'm sorry. For what? That cold tone again. For leaving the apartment without warning anyone, or saying where I went. I really am. I should have at least left a note for them to know. I realized it while speaking with Bobo in the car. I only wanted to exit the apartment, but I didn't think about how I would worry Bobo or Tanya. Or Damien. That's it. You could have been killed, Nora. I sigh. Liam was with me. Liam is an 18-year-old brat. An 18-year-old lead hunter. And what choice did I have? You should have stayed right where you were. He suddenly yells with a bang on the wall. Don't get mad, please. I am already mad, Nora. You knew I didn't want you to go out, and you still did. You put yourself in danger, and you told no one. His voice echoes on the wall, and I can't help but step back. This situation is much scarier than the one before. I find myself defenseless facing him, and he's so furious right now I have no idea what he is capable of. He is breathing heavily, and his fists are clenched. Why does it have to be like this? But I'm not giving in to him. I feel like if I don't step up to him right now, I will never be able to express myself ever again. You can't keep me locked here forever, Damien. I will go out again, with your permission or not. I shouldn't even need to ask you. Why won't you listen? He suddenly steps forward and grabs my shoulders. Nora, you could have been hurt or killed. You went out there, and if anything had happened to you. If anyone had put a hand on you, I swear I would have slaughtered each and every one of that wretched clan. The only reason I stayed back is that Liam said you were with him, Nathaniel was coming, and you were finally taking them to your clan. I grab his shirt and try to push him back, but he just won't let go. I use all my strength to repel him, but he won't move an inch. Why is he so strong? Though his hands are not hurting me, I hate to feel trapped like this. I can't help but start tearing up, exhausted from everything that happened, from yelling and fighting with him. Let go of me. Why are you so interested in finding my clan in the first place? You don't know anything about me, yet all you talk about is getting to those people. Let me go. I hate this. They hurt you, Nora. Those people abused you for years. I will never forgive them for what they did to you. And they are going to pay for every single time they dared to touch you. His voice is so cold I get the chills. Why is he so mad? I try to push him away from me again, ignoring my stupid crying. I understand that he saw my scars, but that's not enough for this murderous intent I can feel from him. No, there is something else. I remember what Tanya said in the car, and all of a sudden, the reason for Damien's anger becomes so bright. I stop trying to push him away, slowly realizing the truth. You felt it. I keep looking into his eyes to see if I'm right, and he suddenly releases me, his arms falling to his sides. I stare at him, completely stunned by what just hit me. I would never have imagined such a thing a few hours ago, but now that explains it all. Everything about Damien's actions towards me. His eagerness to know where I come from. His hatred for my clan and even his extreme protective attitude towards me. My hands tighten on his shirt, and I whisper in a breath. You felt it all, didn't you? 
Every single time I was hurt, you felt it through our bond. Chapter 19 A long silence follows my words. I was right. Damien is avoiding my gaze, but that is way too late. I... I feel like crying again. How did he feel, all those years? I remember each hit I took, every slap I got unfairly. Feeling my pain through his wolf and being unable to do anything about it, how could he endure it? That's the worst feeling. I'm so sor, don't. He stops me, putting his hands on mine and holding them tight. He looks down at me, and even if he is still angry, I can tell he is trying hard to hold it in. I don't want to hear you apologize, Nora. What I want, is to make sure those bastards never approach you again. I am never forgiving what they did to you. That night. My wolf was going crazy. Someone was trying to take my mate by force, Nora. Do you have any idea how I felt back then? Why won't you tell me anything? I'm crying for good now, reminiscing what happened. Marcus grinned, his dirty hands on me. My screams, my wolf begging for help. I never imagined my mate could have been, hearing me, feeling my despair. I understand his anger. He is not just mad for no reason. It's not like he wanted any of this. I get it. Damien had to endure it for years. Not being able to do anything, feeling my wolf's suffering day after day. And now, this. He must have been mad, so mad. I shake my head. He is boiling with anger, but all I can feel is sadness. Even I feel the guilt of letting him endure all my hardships with me. How can he not hate my clan? All of this, everything that happened is so wrong. And with what happened? I shiver, overthrown by disgust. Alec tried to sell me to Marcus. I fought all I could, and I escaped somehow. What if I didn't make it? If I didn't protect myself, if Marcus had taken what he wanted? I would have been destroyed completely inside, and Damien would have felt it, too. I realize I'm the one being unfair to him. He's been powerless, in the dark for years, and all I've done is push him away every time he wanted answers. Protecting my pack from his wrath seemed right back then, but there are some people who deserve his anger and pay back just as much as mine. I look up to him and try to stop my frenetic sobbing. Marcus Sickles. Who? Asks Damien with a frown, putting his hands on my shoulders again, more gently this time. The guy who assaulted me. His name is Marcus Sickles, from my Jade Moon pack but... Damien, I think he might be dead. Things are getting clearer. The blood on my dress, on my hands. Oh, my goddess. I think I... Suddenly, I feel really nauseous, like I'm about to collapse. Black and white dots cover my vision. I feel myself stagger, but Damien notices it right away, and his hands catch me before I fall. Nora? Nora, what's wrong? You. Nora. Nora. Tanya. All of my strength has left me at once. I hear rushing steps and panicked voices around me. Someone grabs my wrist, and I lean against someone's chest. Damien's reassuring smell gets to me, and I wish I could get even closer to my mate, where my wolf could feel safe. Her blood pressure is dropping, we need to lay her down. I feel him carrying me, in a loud growl. Then, I feel something soft beneath me, as he lays me cautiously on my bed. Bobo, go grab some of yesterday's leftovers, she needs to eat something. And water. I'll call the hospital. No need boss, Nora just fainted from fatigue. That's too many emotions for her today, and Bobo mentioned she barely ate this morning. 
she just needs some rest. If anything, you could ask Nathaniel to have something nutritious delivered from the restaurant. Okay. I feel cold hands on my arms, palpating me, and I feel a bit better from laying down. I somehow manage to open my eyes, and Tanya smiles at me. She is putting some blood pressure monitor on my wrist. Hey, baby girl. Stay with us, okay? Let's see your tension. The device makes some weird beeping sounds, and Tanya doesn't look too satisfied with the result while she takes it off. Yeah, not in top shape today. You are staying in bed for the rest of the day, baby girl. I don't feel too good, either. My head is not spinning anymore, but it's like all strength has left my body. I want to close my eyes again, but I'm worried about Damien. I don't know where he is, I can only hear him, somewhere not far, speaking French. I feel something large and fluffy hopping on the bed next to my legs. It's just Bobo, baby girl, he's going to keep you warm. I manage to nod, definitely feeling a bit better from laying down. At least I can now stay awake without too much effort or feeling numb all over. I feel Tanya's hand patting my head, and Damien comes back to my vision field. How's she? She is okay, boss, just tired a bit. Nora, you think you can eat something? The three of them help me get a bit of yesterday's dinner, and then Tanya insists they let me rest. I do feel really tired. When I wake up, I immediately realize I'm not alone. Someone's arms are wrapping me, and a second pair of legs are on top of the sheets. I feel warm, and this is the first time I ever felt so secure. I recognize Damien's smell while coming to my senses. I vaguely remember collapsing in the living room. How do you feel? His mouth is close to my ear, and I can't help but blush a little. I wish I could hide somewhere, but I feel his chest against my back, and there's no way I could even move a toe without him knowing. At least I'm glad he can't see my face. Is it really okay for him to hold me like this? He even avoided seeing me before, and no we are. Well, sleeping on the same bed. Much better. It's true. I'm still a bit numb, but my head isn't spinning, and I don't feel too tired anymore. However, I don't really want to get up right now. Lying next to my mate feels so warm, so right, and my wolf is almost purring. I wonder how he is holding up, being so close. Is this, really okay? I ask, hoping he understands what I mean, don't ask. I can't help but giggle a little, hearing his annoyed tune. He must be fighting against his instincts like crazy right now. I'm truly grateful for that. It feels so good to be lying next to him. Being close to my mate feels like I will never feel incomplete again. And makes me want more. I don't want to act greedy now. I know it's not the moment. But that closeness with Damien is definitely something I will want more of again. I remember how I sometimes envied the mated couples of my pack. The girls always looked so happy whenever their loved ones were in the same room, like nothing else mattered. It's so rare for a fated couple to be able to find each other most werewolves live their whole life hoping to find their mate. Some give up at some point and get married anyway and others run miles to search for the one. And there is the worst case scenario, like my parents. What is it? He asks. I was just thinking. You could have rejected me. If you did, our bond would have been severed and, you could have lived your life normally. No his firm tone surprises me, and I wonder why he was so set on not abandoning me. I am still missing pieces of this puzzle. A long silence follows, but I have to ask. Damien. How did you know about me? Tanya told me. It's not only that you felt our bond, 
but you already knew exactly what I looked like. How come? He sighs, and I feel him move to bury his face into my hair, his forehead on my shoulder. One of his arms is wrapped around my shoulders, the other around my waist, and both suddenly hold me tighter against him. This closeness makes me blush even more, and I can feel my wolf getting agitated. She likes it, but she somehow wants more. Hush girl, not now, we need to talk about some serious stuff right now. We've met before. It can't be. My wolf didn't feel anything like a bond before I saw you at the hospital, she had never met you. That's because you were too young. Your wolf wasn't awakened yet. Mine was. He recognized you right away, even if our bound was one way at that time. The age difference. I hadn't thought about that. Most werewolves only start feeling their wolf self for the first time around 7 to 10 years old, a few months before they actually start shape-shifting. Before then, we are exactly like actual humans. No enhanced sense of smell, no night vision, no mind linking to our pairs. And no way to recognize our mates even if they're right in front of us. But I didn't know we could bond even if our mate isn't awakened yet. Doesn't that mean the bond is actually that strong? How impressive! And mysterious! But that would mean we met when I was really young. I felt my wolf for the first time before my eighth birthday, if I'm not wrong. How old were we then? I was thirteen. You were just six. We have a seven years old difference. I ask, surprised. I did guess he was twenty-four or older, since he was older than Nathaniel, but still, it's a bit amusing to hear it. He growls, a bit annoyed. Six years and three months. You even know my birth date. December 3rd, 2000. You told me back then. Then why can't I remember it at all? Well, I was young indeed, but... I would have sworn I had never seen his silver eyes before. How did we meet? I wait a long moment, but he doesn't answer. Did he fall asleep? I try to turn around to face him, but he stops me, still holding me tight in his embrace. Damien! I'll tell you some other time. Why? It's... It's not a happy memory. For either of us. I just don't want to reminisce now, Nora. Some other time, I'll tell you. Not today. Not a happy memory. But I want to know. Why can't I simply remember it? I thought my unhappy memories started when I was seven, when we lost our parents. I wonder what would Damien say if he knew about that tragedy? My worst memory so far, with Marcus' episode. I shiver. What is it? Nothing, I just thought about the man that tried to, don't worry, I swear we'll get him. Liam sent the hunters to get him, wherever he is hiding. Alive or not we will find him. I had forgotten I finally gave Marcus' name to Damien. I am aware that by doing so, I basically condemned the guy to death, but I have no pity for that. And I will feel safer once he's caught. I wish we could at least know for certain if he's dead or alive. The memories from before I fainted come back to me, and I move my hands to find Damien's. I weave my fingers with his, looking for some strength. Damien, I... I think I stabbed him. What do you remember? I tried to defend myself. He... He grabbed me and tore my dress. I remember scratching his face, and him slapping me. We fought, my wolf was going nuts, and I almost lost control. I think... I think he grabbed me by the hair at some point, he wanted to take me away from the entrance because... because I screamed. I... I think he took me to a kitchen, and I took a... a knife and I... I stop, 
unable to say one more word. I felt Damien's anger on the rise as I was reminiscing, but I didn't stop. I feel like if I didn't tell him now, I would never be able to talk about it again, to anyone. He holds me tight, breathing in with his face buried in my hair. His closeness is the most comforting thing I have ever experienced, but that doesn't wash away the guilt. Oh moon goddess, I really stabbed someone. Feeling my distress, his thumb gently caresses my skin. Nora, it's okay. It's okay. I swear, I won't let anything like this happen ever again to you, Nora. I swear to you. I feel Damien's arms tightening around me and his lips on my shoulder, but I can't help but cry bitterly. Oh moon goddess, I don't want to be a murderer. I just didn't want him to touch me, to force himself on me. I keep crying silently, soothed by Damien's voice, whispering to me until I go back to sleep again. I didn't want to fall back asleep. I drowsily wake up, but it doesn't feel like that much time has passed since I talked with Damien. What time is it? I turn my head to my bedroom window, and it's actually dusk. I slept the whole afternoon, how embarrassing. And now there's no way I'll go back to sleep tonight. While still lying in bed, I realize that Damien's gone, but Bobo is there, sleeping on the floor next to my bed. Bobo. He raises his head immediately and walks up to me. He puts his big head on my mattress, but I push him away with a frown. I really hope you brushed your teeth since you chomped that arm, Bobo. Gosh, that was disgusting to even remember. Where is our mate? I sit up, shocked to hear my wolf. I can feel her so clearly now. She is sniffing around for Damien's smell, and I find myself doing the same thing unknowingly. What a sensation! I can read in her as clearly as I can think now. I think she's grey. Or no, maybe even white. She doesn't mind Bobo's presence, she likes him, but she wishes it was Damien. And I can actually smell Tanya's not far, too. How strange. Bobo lets out a short, low-pitched sound, and I know he asks if I'm okay. I wouldn't call it a sentence, more like a, feeling. It doesn't come as precisely as if we were actually mind-linked, but my wolf still understands what he means to say for me. I'm okay, Bobo. I. I can feel my wolf actually. He tilts his head to the side like a curious dog, but I ignore him. I just want to enjoy this new range of sensations. It feels really different, yet the same. As if I had just awakened a sixth sense, or a second me, no matter how weird that sounds. I breathe in deeply, and she is checking out our environment. The smell of fresh sheets, and some lavender coming from the wardrobes. Bobo mostly smells like food and dead leaves. No smell of blood, thankfully. She picks up something that smells good like, cold chicken and onion soup. I take a look around me and notice a closed Tupperware on the nightstand. Now that I think about it, I'm hungry. We both are. But as I reach out to grab the cold soup, something weird holds me back from my ankle. Did I just hear a metallic sound? I frown and push away the sheets to look at my legs. What the? Damien. I yell, too shocked to say anything else. Instead of him, Tanya rushes into the room, alerted by my screaming. She has changed into dark jeans and her hair is all over the place. She walks to my bed to try and check me with a worried look, but I push her away. Baby girl, are you okay? No, I'm not. Tanya, why am I chained to the bed? Chapter 20 I'm totally panicking right now. A shackle is running from one of the bed's feet to my ankle, with a big leather bracelet holding it up. 
Why am I chained to this bed? I look at Tanya, trying to get a decent, logical answer to what is going on, but she just seems really uneasy. Nora, I... Sorry, I couldn't stop him, Tanya. Don't tell me this is Damien's idea. Her silence is more than eloquent for me, but I can't believe her. Is he crazy? Why would he chain me to the bed like a dog? I try to force on it, but of course, it won't go off. He can't do this to me. I get out of bed, only to realize the chain is about ten feet long, just enough for me to reach my bathroom. I take my head in my hands, unable to believe what's happening. Nora are you okay? I'm not, Tanya. Why would he do this? I'm chained to a bed. She really looks sorry, exchanging glances with her brother. I swear I tried to stop him, Nora, but he didn't listen. He said he doesn't want you out until they have caught that guy, Marcus. Oh my goddess, is it because of what I told him? Did he freak out because I told him the details of when Marcus assaulted me? I remember his last words before I fell asleep. He really meant it. He won't let me out until they have caught him. But he didn't have to chain me to that bed like some animal. I try pulling on it, but Tanya intervenes to stop me. Stop, stop, Nora, you're worrying me. You really shouldn't be moving around so much when you collapsed earlier, Tanya, I don't care. I don't want to be chained. Not by Damien or anyone else. Where is he? He's not here, he had to go back to work. He left about half an hour ago, call him. I am looking straight at her, making her clear I won't stop until I can actually talk to him. She sighs but takes out her phone. I'm so angry, I'm almost shaking right now. She gives me her phone, and within a minute Damien is at the end of the line. What is it? Damien, you can't chain me to a bed. I'm in a meeting right now. I don't care. You just can't do this. You undo it right now. I can't believe you did something that crazy to me. You are safe where you are, Nora. I don't want to risk you sneaking out on Tanya and Bobo again and getting yourself in danger. Damien, I promise I won't do that again without telling you. I swear. But I don't want you to force me like this. I don't want to be chained like a dog. No Damien. But he hangs up on me without letting me finish. I let out a scream of frustration. How can he do this to me? I know I shouldn't have snuck out, but that doesn't mean he can go ahead and do something like this to me. Tanya is nervously playing with one of her braids, visibly feeling really sorry about the situation. Do you have a key to this thing? Answer me honestly. No, baby girl, I swear I don't. The boss knows I was against this, so he won't trust us with a spare key. Bobo, can you break this bed? He lets out a growl and shakes his head. I can't blame him. This thing is obviously too big, but I had to ask. I sigh. I can't believe this. I need a clear head. I grab new clothes in the closet and head to the bathroom. It really is long enough for me to take a shower with this horrendous thing still hanging on my ankle. I take my time in the bathroom, washing my hair and body with cold water to try and think. I'm too angry to make good decisions right now. While under the water, I keep thinking about what to do. I can't let Damien do this. I know how stubborn he is, but I just can't let him win. I understand I went too far, but this is not security, this is a punishment. I get out of the shower and start dressing up. I randomly pick some black lingerie, but I realize this shackle is a nightmare to even put my panties on. I can somehow manage to pass the underwear through the hole, 
but that means I can't even wear proper pants as long as I have this thing on. By chance, I choose a sweater dress that I can actually put on with no difficulties, but I'm still mad. I glare at my reflection in the mirror, with my wild black curls falling all over my shoulders. I look like an angry panther, and my scar seems somewhat broader since I'm pissed. But I also realize my eye color has slightly changed. From a natural dark blue, my wolf's recent awakening has given it a nightly shining shade, like two sapphires. Even if I like this change, it doesn't minimize my anger one bit. I'm not going to go along with this change. But what should I do? Three days later. Nora, please. She is sitting across me on the bed, but she still ignores me. Her eyes are fixed on the sunset outside. It's already been three days. I can't take it anymore. Nora, I don't mind if you give me the silent treatment, but you have to eat. Please. She's already so thin why does she have to be on a hunger strike now? She fainted just three days ago. Tanya said she only exits her bed to go to the bathroom and change. I look at the chain on her ankle, and something indescribable pierces me. I know. I know she's angry at me for doing this to her. She was furious on the phone, and since then, she hasn't talked to me. Not a word. She only speaks to the siblings, and that's it. Bobo is laying behind her, like a big cushion, supporting her as she sits. I have to tame my wolf, since he doesn't like another male touching her, even though Bobo is not a threat in that way. He is just protective of Nora, as usual. They all are. She looks so fragile, like she could break at any moment. Yet, Nowadays she has this fierce look in her eyes, her inner wolf makes them shine with this beautiful blue. I wish she could understand. How much I want to protect her. How unbearably precious she is to me. I want to shield her, protect her, hide her from the world where no one can ever harm her. I have lost her once. And for ten years I had to endure the pain of not being able to protect her. How did she endure it all? My wolf went mad every single time something happened to her, it was infuriating. Knowing she was in pain, suffering somewhere, and not being able to do a thing. I have searched for her for so long. Now that she is actually here, I'm terrified with the thought of losing her. I want to SR them. Find every single person who ever dared to lay a hand on her and kill them with my own hands. She is too gentle for this, she doesn't understand. How much I hate them, how hard it is for me to contain this violent part of myself. When she went out. O oh moon goddess, I could have ordered for that wretched clan to be destroyed within seconds, just for the sake of her coming back safely to me. Nora doesn't know how much blood these hands are tainted with. She doesn't know all I've done to be where I stand now, and yet, I can't regret a thing when she is right in front of me now. Just looking at her makes it all worth it. And yet my mate is perishing because she hates what I've done. But I'm terrified. With the thought of her being in danger again. I was furious at Liam. How could he bring her back there? If he wasn't my brother, I... But she came back now. She is here, where I can see her, where I can protect her. Nora, look at me, please. When she finally looks at me again, I'm taken aback by how much I feel for her. Her pale skin, her thin body. The way her fingers play on her long, curly black hair. The way she can't help but blush slightly whenever our eyes met. Her thin lips. I breathe in, trying to hold it in. I take her hand, and surprisingly, she doesn't repel me. Her fingers are so thin and pale compared to mine, like a child's. I take them closer, and slowly kiss her palm. Nora smiles gently, 
and it's hard to remember she's actually mad at me. Is she? I don't see any anger in her eyes, it's like. She's just waiting for me. I breathe out a sigh. I know what she wants, but. It's hard. She might want to leave again. And we still haven't found that scum that dared to touch her. Oh, I can't wait for Liam to find him. Once he is found, he'd better be alive, because I want to kill him with my own hands. I won't let him get to her. Not him, or anyone. I'll protect her. I'll protect Nora whatever it takes. And this time, no one will take her from me. No matter what, I'm not losing her. Never again. Now I am strong enough for that. It's not like before. No one can stop me, and those who try will regret it. But Nora is getting stronger, too. I can feel it. Now her wolf is fully awake, and she is definitely getting fiercer. Nathaniel thinks I should trust her more, but... I don't want to expose her. Can't she just stay here and live peacefully? She hates it, I know. I know. I sigh, and my hand goes to her shackle. I use my strength and tear it in a few seconds with an annoying metallic sound. Thank you. Moon Goddess, it is so good to hear her soft voice again. She gets dangerously close to me and puts her hands on my face. I don't know how much more I can bear before my wolf goes crazy. We want her. We want her so badly, it's hard to keep it in. But I don't want this. I don't want to hurt or frighten her. Somehow Nora seems to have accepted a mate like me, and I don't want to lose that. Boss, she needs to eat. Leave us. Tanya and her brother exit the room without discussion. Nora sees them going, but she doesn't say a thing, she's focused on me. Her cold hands on my neck are enough to drive me crazy how can she not realize that? She is sitting facing me, and I have to fight my wolf every second to not push her on this bed and make her my mate for real. I want her. I want her so, so badly. But without even knowing how cruel she is, she just smiles at me and whispers. Damien, I promise I won't leave again without telling you. But you can't, ever, do that to me again. Don't restrain me. It's like I'm back in that basement all over again. The basement. They had her locked in a basement. When my brothers told me, I was that close to going there myself. If Nathaniel didn't have a plan for them already, I would have gone there and torn that scum alpha to shreds. I nod. Nora is right. If I lock her up, even if I can persuade myself that it's for her own good, I'm no better than them. I lean towards her and kiss her forehead. I love that smell of hers. She smells like summer rain and wild flowers. Okay, I promise, but... Don't do something like that again. Take Bobo and Tanya with you, and tell me, or Nathaniel. So, you are okay with me going out again? She asks, suddenly smiling brightly. I want to say no. I really do. Stay here, stay safe. Where I can see you. Nora has no idea what a battle it is going to be once she steps out there. You have yet to experience how dangerous of a world we live in, Nora. Can't she see I just want to protect her? No, she can't. Because she has lived trapped forever, and now she has a wolf inside her urging her to go out there and take her stand. Nora has an alpha heritage, I've realized it. It's in her eyes, the way she doesn't avoid others' gazes and how she speaks asserting herself more and more. But now, she is just as soon to be a teen girl, looking at me with joy and excitement. I nod. Yes, I am. Nora, just promise me to not do such a reckless thing ever again. 
I won't, I swear. All I want is for you to trust me. Look. She places a bit more space between the two of us, and I see her control breathing and closing her eyes. I hear the sound of clothes tearing up, and most beautiful wolf I've ever seen now sits right before my eyes. She is, breathtaking. A gorgeous white wolf, with piercing blue eyes and a slender figure. She looks at me, and my wolf almost loses it all from seeing his counterpart for the first time. How can she be so heavenly? White wolves with blue eyes are the rarest. Werewolves eyes change color when they shape shift, so we match actual wolf eye colors with natural colors like brown, gray, yellow, or green. But blue is very rare, as it is the pup's eye color. But not only does Nora keep her beautiful blue eyes, but she also has pure, spotless white fur. In our oldest legends, white wolves are said to be the most loved by Moon Goddess, her blessed children. And Nora is one. I'm not even that surprised by her other appearance. You're beautiful. I whisper to her. The white wolf comes closer, and I gently caress her head. But her paw is on the chain, pushing it towards me. That's when I understand. She could have escaped. Long ago. In her wolf form, she is thin enough taking her ankle of the shackle, and it would have taken two seconds. But she didn't. She stayed to prove she was just waiting for me to trust her and free her myself. I sigh. I'm such an I asterisk T. Suddenly, I feel her changing again, and I close my eyes while taking off my T shirt to give it out to her. Nora is blushing and unbearably cute as she wears this oversized top. Thank you, she says with a smile. And I can't take it anymore. I grab her waist and draw Nora to me in a kiss I've waited way too long to give her. Chapter 21 I can't believe it. Damien's lips are on mine, and he is kissing me so passionately, my breath can barely keep up. And yet, I want more. I respond to his kiss, my hands on his torso, my whole body on fire. His grip on my waist bring me even closer to him, actually sitting on his lap, and his fingers in my hair are making me crazy. I'm losing control. I need him like I need air, and I crave for more each second his lips are on mine. It's not a sweet, innocent kiss. Damien is passionate, claiming his hold on me wanting me. Our bodies entangle dangerously, and I can feel a wild fire igniting inside me. I'm... Gosh, I'm going insane. I didn't even know I could be so indecent, but here I am, responding to Damien's kiss with all my might. My clumsy hands are on his neck and on his bare torso. It's almost like my wolf has taken over. I'm so... reckless and hot all over. The taste of his lips, his hard breathing, and his hands all over my body are driving me crazy. All of a sudden, he stops our kiss, and he pushes me on the bed, holding my wrists down. We are both panting, looking into each other's eyes. Okay, stop, stop Nora. If we keep going, I nod. I know. I felt his wolf going crazy. I can barely hold mine, too. She might be ready, but I don't think I am. I mean. I'm not sure about it. I just know I feel like I went through hell and heaven altogether, but I know my wolf is also doing her share, too. She is so excited that I don't know how I feel myself anymore. I need a clear head, and for now. I'm just dizzy. I need to catch my breath. Gosh, I must be so red from blushing. Sorry, I, but I don't know what to say. Everything's so confusing right now. Damien leans on me and kisses me, a quick, innocent one this time. Stay there. You need to eat something now. I'll go get Tanya. 
He could just use their mind link to ask her, but we both know it's best to put some distance between us for now. He exits, or should I say escapes, the room quickly. I'm such a mess right now. I must be red from blushing, and I can barely catch my breath. I sit up, adjusting Damien's t-shirt, and put my fingers in my hair to try and brush it roughly. Oh my gosh, I can't believe what just happened. I feel like I just got off an emotional roller coaster. My heart is beating like crazy, and my wolf is not acting any more decent either. I can't stop smiling. I'm happy I finally managed to get Damien to understand and trust me, but... I didn't expect what followed. I was so glad to show him my wolf form, but I couldn't possibly have imagined he would, kiss me next. Nora. Tanya just came back, carrying a table tray. I feel so embarrassed facing her after what just happened, and I can't help but glance down. Oh gosh, I forgot I just had a t-shirt on. It's big enough to cover up to my thighs, but still. I go to grab a new outfit from one of the wardrobes and run to the bathroom, making Tanya laugh. Nora, I know where I've seen that t-shirt. You naughty girl. This is so embarrassing I could die. I try to ignore her laughing while I get dressed up. I grabbed a blue denim skirt and a white top that actually match my taste. Once I'm a bit more decent, I take a look at myself in the mirror. My hair is a bit all over the place, and my cheeks are bright red, but it's not that bad. When I exit the bathroom, I flee straight to the bed and stubbornly concentrate on my lunch to ignore Tanya's amused glances. Well, happy to see you feeling better, baby girl. Bobo was worried, too, you know. At least she doesn't look like she will try to ask difficult questions. I catch a bit more rest in the main room after eating. I am still tired from my hunger strike, after all, and Damien needs to go to work, anyway. He said goodbye with a surprisingly innocent and swift kiss, but just remembering it makes me blush, too. Bobo volunteers to accompany my nap on the couch. When I wake up again, it's dinner time. Bobo is snoring loudly at my feet, curled up like a giant, furry ball. I get up and join Tanya in the kitchen, but to my surprise, she is not alone. Nathaniel smiles at me as soon as I come in, standing next to the counter. He is dressed in a formal shirt and dark jeans his blonde hair shining like he just stepped out of some magazine. How can the Black Brothers be so handsome, all three of them? Hello, Princess. How are you feeling today? Much better, thanks. Are you staying for dinner? I ask as I walk over the counter to check what's left in the fridge. No, Princess, I'm just dropping by. I was hoping we could talk a little. I frown and close the fridge. What does Nathaniel wants to talk about? He may be smiling, but I can tell he's actually pretty serious. I walk over and sit at the table next to him. Tanya brings us drinks, and I know she wants to listen, too. What do you want to talk about? Remember you mentioned you wanted to work. I nod, intrigued. I did more than mention it considering the argument I had with Damien that night, but I didn't think Nathaniel would be the one to bring that matter on the table again. But the second brother gives me a reassuring smile. Well, I've discussed this with Damien, and I wanted to know if you would be interested in working at my restaurant, La Rose Argenti. You could have a trial period there and see if you like it. Are you serious? I'm so shocked. I can barely breathe. I can't believe Nathaniel is offering me a job. He laughs at my surprised expression. Yes, I am, Nora. I happen to be short on staff at the moment, and as we both know, my brother wants you somewhere we can watch you. My restaurant is secure enough for that, 
and I know you have a knack for French cuisine, so isn't this perfect? But, you've never seen me at work before. And to get such an offer, even I have heard of that restaurant. Of course, I didn't know who it belonged to, but La Rose Argenti is famous for being one of the top, first-rate restaurants of Silver City. I only have experience as a waitress in a pub and cooking for a pack. But Nathaniel laughs at my confused expression. Don't worry, Nora. As I said, just give it a try. No pressure, princess, it's all up to you. You can take your time, and when you've made your decision, you'll give me your answer next week, okay? I nod, but I'm still going to need some time to process this. It's like having my dream job served on a plate. It feels too good to be true, and in a certain way, it is. But I know of Damien and his brother's influence. It is not an exaggeration to say they own half of the city. Liam did mention his brother had several hotels and restaurants to manage. Finding me a spot in one of them probably was a piece of cake. But still, it is hard to believe how lucky I am. If I can make it, though. I really want to make the cut. Nora? There is something else we need to discuss. He looks a bit more serious this time. He puts his hands before him, taking a thinking pose for a second, searching for his words. Then, he looks at me in the eye, not smiling for once. We are facing a, rather odd issue since we met you. Damien and I have been looking into the city records for a while, as we were trying to get to know more about you. He means when they were searching for my clan. I suppose. It is probably no surprise, either, that they can freely run through the city's classified documents to get information on someone. It must be as simple as walking in a library for them. But what would be the problem with my legal information? The city records mostly hold every citizen information, such as our birth date, the city of origin, and parents. The night creatures like werewolves also can access some particular information such as our family trees, the moon clans we are related to, and rank data through the city's records. But I don't see where there might be an issue on any of these. Nathaniel frowns, and takes out several documents that I have never seen before. When you told us your name was Nora Blue Moon, we started looking for you. My brother knew your birth date and I originally thought we would be able to discover your background information quite easily. But we didn't. What? I don't get it. How could they not find a single piece of information about me? I look at the documents scattered. Register of births from 1995 to 2003, list of family names established in Silver City since the 18th century, several clans registers, and a few family trees with names similar to mine. What do you mean? I ask, confused. That means there is absolutely no trace of your existence, nowhere, Nora. Legally, you have no records in any of these documents. You should be in at least half of them, but you are not. No girl named Nora was born in 2000 or any of the years around it. There is no family name like Blue Moon registered in Silver City, and you are not even mentioned as part of the Jade Moon clan. I look at him, dumbfounded. How is that even possible? I have never lived anywhere else as far as I can remember, so how can this city be completely unaware of my existence? I check the documents he's brought, trying to find some clue, anything to prove he's wrong, but after a few minutes, I have to admit Nathaniel's right. I don't appear anywhere. How is that even possible? I ask. Nathaniel frowns. I'm not sure, Princess. It seems like your existence has been concealed from the very first moment you were born. But why would someone hide her birth? Asks Tanya, perplexed. I have no idea. 
The Jade Moon clan was simply ignoring my existence so they could use me as a slave, and could have not been bothered about it. But I should still have some legal existence somewhere, shouldn't I? If so, then what is this? What about Alec? I suddenly ask. Nathaniel frowns. Isn't that your brother's name? Yes. Alec was born in 1997, did you find any trace of him? Not in the Jade Moon clan's registers, but we can find him somewhere else, he grabs the 1997 births register, and we quickly go through it, when I finally spot him. Here. In October 3rd, Alec. Blackwood. That's the right birth date and first name, but why is his last name different? It doesn't make sense. I know my last name. Blue Moon, Nora Blue Moon. I grab the 2000 births register, thinking I may have missed something. Maybe my name was misspelled, or I was registered as Blackwood, like Alec. But after checking twice, still nothing. No name even remotely similar to Nora Blue Moon or even Nora Blackwood. There is a loose Norwood, born in early October, and a Janice Bell in January, but those two are the closest I could find. Alec Blackwood, reads Nathaniel, who's still looking over the 1997 register. First born son of Stephen Blackwood and Alice Blackwood, born Alice Forst. It says your parents got married in June the same year. I nod. Those are the names of my parents. So why am I not registered under their names like Alec? I can't believe it. Do you know of the Blackwood family? I ask Tanya. There are a few Blackwoods, in the Gold Moon and Rising Moon clans mostly. It's a rather common last name for werewolves. Nathaniel and I both grab each clan's register and start looking. I find it first and show them. My parents and brother are indeed in the Gold Moon's clan register, along with a long line of ancestors. Do you remember living in this pack? Asks Nathaniel. But I shake my head. No, I was too young. Our parents died when I was seven. I don't remember much before that. The trauma of my parents' death is still lingering somewhere in my mind, but I really don't want to think about it now. All of this is unbelievable. How can I be totally omitted from all of those documents? Did my parents not record my birth? If we were part of the Gold Moon clan, I should have been recorded like any of their pack's children. Nathaniel sighs, and grabs those documents back. He tries to give me a reassuring smile, but I'm really too confused right now. Don't worry, princess, there must be a logical explanation. For now, let's not focus on this, okay? I will try to look deeper into this. At least we now know your parents' names, and we are still looking for your brother. Maybe he will be able to help you understand some parts of your story you didn't know about. I nod, but I still don't know what to believe about Alec. I didn't mention to anyone yet that my brother tried to sell me to Marcus. I don't know what Liam actually understood from my conversation with Liz, but for now, Nathaniel and Damien don't seem to know about it, and I think it might be best to keep it that way until we find Alec. He is still my brother, after all. I hope he is still in the area and we can actually discuss things. I get up, trying to process everything that just happened, and Tanya and Nathaniel are thoughtful enough to give me a moment. They start chatting about trivial matters, making it obvious they are changing the topic on purpose. I make myself some herbal tea, trying to calm myself. Nora? I still have one more thing to discuss with you. Princess. I come back to Nathaniel, my cup in one hand, and he smiles as I sit facing him again. Tanya gets behind me and starts braiding my hair for some reason. About. The Jade Moon Clan. I had forgotten about that matter. 
Nathaniel did leave them with an unambiguous warning, and summoned Vincent as the Alpha for a fight in five. No, four days now? This is going to be serious. People from other clans might even come and watch, and our turf is exceptionally well located, and thus, envied by others. You challenged Vincent for the Alpha position. Are you going to fight him yourself? Do you really want to take over our clan? I ask. He has an intriguing smile for a second, and looks at me with a mysterious expression. What is he thinking now? No, Nora. I was thinking you would fight this Alpha to take over the Jade Moon clan. Excuse me? Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description. Rest audio book will be continued in next episode.